Hello, my name is Giles Whitehead and I'm an artist and it's always interesting to find new techniques to try out. Now this technique I'm going to tell you about is not actually very new at all. It was actually invented by Sir John Herschel who was a chemist, a scientist, an astronomer and an experimental photographer and he invented the cyanotype process in 1842 and this process was mainly used for reproducing diagrams also known as blueprints for obvious reasons. But the process was also used by a botanist and photographer, Anna Atkins, who came from Tunbridge in Kent, which is just up the road from me. And she used the process as a way of documenting plant life and seaweed. And she is considered the first person to publish a book with photographic images using the cyanotype method of laying plants onto sensitized paper and exposing them to sunlight so how do you do it it's actually very simple first of all you need to buy two chemicals ferric ammonium citrate and potassium ferrocyanide and you mix up equal quantities of both chemicals you don't need that much for it to go quite a long way and in a darkened room you can paint a solution onto some paper and then leave it to dry out it doesn't have to be totally dark I mean, you need to be able to see, but make sure it dries out in the dark. What I did was to leave it to dry out in the cupboard overnight. Once it's dry, it's best to put it in a light proof bag and then put it in a box, just like you would keep photographic paper. Keep it out of the light, because as soon as it goes into the light, that's when the chemical reaction happens. So this is a really fun activity to do by yourself or with your family or with, well, whoever you want really. Go out for a walk in the countryside and gather yourself some plants and flowers and leaves. Then, once again, in subdued lighting, if you then arrange your plants onto your pre-prepared paper. What I like about this process is that if you've got objects that are really flat on the surface, then you get a nice sharp edge. And if they're lifted or they're slightly more three-dimensional, then you get more of a blurred edge. Some plants are a little bit more translucent, so you can get lots of different lovely effects. My son is using some shapes he cut out from cardboard to add a bit of narrative to his picture. So once you're happy with your arrangement, then place a piece of glass or perspex over the top and then leave it out in the sunlight for 10 to 20 minutes, depending on how strong the sun is. And it's probably best to overexpose rather than underexpose. So be patient, go and find something else to do while you're waiting. Go and walk along the tightrope or watch the train go by. And then in running water or in a tray of water that you might change regularly, wash off your print to create your very satisfying cyanotype. So what's happening is you're getting a chemical reaction creating this Prussian blue pigment and then once it's dry you'll notice that the blue gets darker now obviously plants are, are really good for creating cyanotypes but you can use any kind of object that is going to block the light you can use transparent objects you can experiment I first tried out this technique when I was at art college and created photograms or as Man Ray called a rayotype using photographic paper in a similar way but the difference with this is you don't need a specialized dark room and you can have great fun experimenting and printing in a beautiful blue.